About five years ago, when Alabama and LSU were fighting for SEC supremacy as near equals, one of those seasons, Alabama was set up in its schedule to face two non-division opponents who went 2 and 14 the previous season. LSU's two non-division opponents were 14 and 2 the previous year. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, here to fix scheduling. It's broken. It's been broken. I'm finally getting around to it. Hopefully somebody's listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you love college football. The audio versions on Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, and iTunes. So think about that. Two chief rivals in one division fighting for supremacy need an equal playing field. In that particular year, Bama was playing two teams in the other division that went 2-14, and 14, two horrible, lousy teams, LSU, 14-2, and two, their two opponents from the previous season. So think about it. LSU-Alabama, they've got to play each other. Then they play the same exact division schedule, the other five games. So what makes the difference in the scheduling of those two non-division games? So we need to make those as equal as we possibly can because the divisions, the conferences, are too large for everyone to play everyone, that would be a true championship. So I'm here to fix it or get it to as close as possible. There are two reasons why we can't make it perfect. I guess a third would be we can't predict how good teams are going to be the next season. We can only base the scheduling on how good they were the previous year. The other two factors that work against us the imbalance in the schedules, the imbalance in the divisions, the quality of the division. So last year, the Western Division won 32 of 56 games against the East, 32-24. Now, if the East could have won four more games to make that 28 all, we'd have a different story and we could balance out the scheduling. But since the West won 32 of 20, uh, 32 of the 56, 32 to 24 then the West scheduling is going to be easier because they're playing easier teams in the East than the Eastern Division schedules. Non-Division are going to be more difficult because they've got to face Alabama, LSU on down the line. All right, the other thing that makes it difficult and nearly impossible to make perfect is because we have rivalries in place. So the SEC schedule is built on rivalries. Alabama plays Tennessee every year. That makes sense. Auburn plays Georgia. It's the South's oldest rivalry. It needs to stay in place. Georgia-Auburn. Even the LSU-Florida rivalry means something, and we'll keep that as well. I would also like to go with Missouri and Texas A&M, two old foes from the Big 12, and geographically, that makes sense as a rivalry. Otherwise, we don't need the other rivalries because they are not truly rivalries. Blow them up. They don't make any sense. Ole Miss doesn't have to play Vandy every year. Mississippi State does not have to play Kentucky every year. They make no sense. Get rid of those so-called matchups or rivalries. Keep the ones that matter. Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and then, of course, LSU and Florida. So this is what we've got this year in 2018 and how unfair it is. Auburn plays Georgia. It's designated rival, plus they play Tennessee. Ten and six two opponents out of the division. LSU, Florida, Georgia, 10 and 6. Their two opponents from last season. Alabama, what a soft touch for the Tide, the national champion. They play Tennessee, who went 0 and 8, and Missouri, who went 4 and 4 last season in conference. So they've got a 4 and 12. So this is not fair. Auburn and Alabama competing for the SEC Western Division along with LSU. And they have a much more difficult road out of the East than Alabama does. Flip it around, and it's even worse in the SEC Eastern Division. Poor Tennessee. It's not bad enough that Tennessee went 0-8 last year, but now they've got to try to dig out of that hole by playing the two best teams from last season in the SEC Western Division, Alabama and Auburn. Similar to what I talked about with LSU and Alabama five years ago. Tennessee plays two teams that went 14-2, and two, the two top seeds in the Western Division last year, 14-2. and two. On the other end of the spectrum, Vanderbilt gets the light touch with Ole Miss and Arkansas, two teams that had combined 4-12 and 12 last season. That's not fair. It doesn't work. Now, we can't make it perfect because of three factors. Again, 
The West dominates the East, 32-24, so you can't make it balanced. Plus, we've got to hold firm to those rivalries of Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and LSU in Florida. So the optimum conclusion here would be for everyone to play two teams last year that went 8-8, eight and eight, but it can't happen. Those are the two reasons why. Plus, take a look at Alabama, for example. Alabama plays Tennessee, and they've got to play Tennessee. It's a great rivalry. Tennessee's down, but Alabama and Tennessee have to play. Well, Tennessee went 0-8 last year. Okay, so if we match up Tennessee and give Alabama the best team in the division, Georgia, that would work out our issue. They play an 0-8 team. They play Georgia at 7-1, so their composite opponents out of the Eastern Division would be 7-9. But if Georgia has to play Alabama, who went 7-1 last year, and they also are forced to play Auburn because of the rivalry, then Georgia is back to that 14-2 record. They would have to play Auburn and Alabama. Now, considering how good Georgia is and is supposed to be, some people would have no issue with that. They would say, hey, those are two great games that Georgia has to play. Let's make them. But my purpose here... My goal and objective is to balance out the scheduling. So we can't do that. So then we need to drop to the next best team in the Eastern Division to match up with Tennessee to play Alabama, and that doesn't quite get it. So Alabama will play Tennessee 0-8, but they also play South Carolina, who went 5-3. and There wasn't really a strong two-seed in the SEC Eastern Division. So the second best team in the East was South Carolina, just a 5-3 and team. So Alabama's composite non-division schedule, 5-11. and 11. Not what we're hoping for, but we were boxed in based on the rivalries and the imbalance of the two teams in the two divisions, I should say. So look to the bottom of your screen. I'm scrolling what the matchups would be in 2018 if we can balance out the schedule as much as we possibly can. The goal is to have an 8-8 eight and eight non-division opponents for everyone, but we can't quite get there because of those factors and those challenges. But we we definitely close this gap considerably from 14 and 2 and 4 and 12, 10 and 6 and 4 and 12. We move it to a position in which now the East, the best record that anyone has to play would be Vanderbilt in playing Mississippi State in Auburn, 11 and 5 last year, and we've got a bunch of 8 and 8s and 7 and 9s and the worst would be Kentucky 7-9, and nine, two opponents. In the SEC Western Division, the best anybody has to play because the East is down with just the 24 wins, so the records aren't as difficult for the West in playing the East. Toughest opponents for the Western Division teams would be Arkansas. They're playing Kentucky and South Carolina, who went 9-7, and seven, so that's not bad. And then we do have an issue like we mentioned with Alabama having to play Tennessee 0-8, and then the best matchup we can give Alabama otherwise would be South Carolina at 5-3. and three. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on how we can make this better, please leave them in the description section below. Otherwise, it's Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please subscribe.